As you guys may know, I am engaged. <laughs> to be married oh, to the love of my life, Israel Houghton. And um, so for me, preparing for marriage is more so um, planning our lives together and uh, making sure that we both enter into marriage with a stable foundation and for the right reason. I love reasons. that. So with that being said, what I wanted to talk about today was the fact that I started premarital counseling, you guys. I love that. And, and if you aren't familiar with what premarital counseling is, for me, um, uh, we are having up our pastor. Yes. Uh, a pastor is actually working with us, the person who we are hoping is going to marry us. And um, growing up, the way I was raised was you go, you take premarital classes, premarital counseling, they ask you great questions. It's almost like a therapy session, but I've never been to therapy before, so this is the closest I've ever gotten to it. Wow. And um, they make sure that you've got a great foundation that mm -hmm. um, if I was a minister and I was gonna marry somebody, I wouldn't just marry just anyone. I'd wanna know that I'm bringing a union together that is doing it for the right reasons and under the covenant right. of God. I love that. Did you like it? Um, so I was so scared because I didn't know. Together? We went together. Okay. Yes. What kind of questions? Okay. Is yes. They asked. <laughs> Obviously, um, they could see that we're very much in love. Yes. Right? But like you always tell me, marriage takes more than that. Yes. So they they asked us. We actually had to go home and do homework. That was more so soul searching as to what do we see our purpose together in life. Love like that. Great, bigger than like just being in love. They gave yes. you homework? Yeah, what do we think our purpose is in life that. together? Do we have a, a shared purpose, a shared goal in life? Yes. And I, I loved that because yes. that, it, it's greater than just, oh, I love you and I'm in love with you. Yes. But what is the greater purpose for our love together? He's what going can to that be... represent yes. to the world? What what can we offer to other couples? What yes. it was it was what other pretty questions deep. they asked. Um, <laughs> trying to think oh they asked about um distrust like you know that sort of thing like adrian you know what do you feel about like real questions that are like you've been in a relationship before where where there has been um what's the word i'm looking infidelity. for infidelity infidelity and things of that sort um how do you feel about that do you trust each other 100 percent? and we kind of delved into that and it actually got kind of weird because my natural reaction to questions like that is to not look stupid Oh, and I have no. a fear of embarrassment that I ever would go out on the limb and say, I know 100% this person would never do that to me out of fear that I'd look stupid one day. And, and my answer was, I don't put anything past anyone. And what does that say? That I had like a little bit of a, a, guard, up. Yeah. a guard up. Now my guard isn't up to Israel, but it's up to opening myself up to other people. Does that right, make sense? Right. Like, like yeah. you're not being a completely transparent with the person who's trying to kind of help you guys. Cor correct. And then at some point that came down and it was a wow. very honest and, and didn't great that feel amazing? It yeah. did. Yes. It That's felt really awesome. Good. So I wanted to ask you guys, all three of you have been married. Some people don't know, Lonnie, you have been married before. Don't tell my business. <laughs> well, <laughs> you said it on the show. Are, Lonnie, this you is a table it. of yes, Lonnie. Yeah. You said it on the show. <laughs> Stop it. You were married. <laughs> Tell them! <laughs> Tell them! <laughs> America, I was married. There you go. The truth will set you free. Why do you hate saying that so much? Because it was the worst six months of my life. Oh my God. No, see, and this is what it is. This is oh, called this is so real. real. Yeah. And I love that, Lonnie. And that's why I'm very you... happy that you're taking marriage, premarital counseling. Did you do it? No, of course. This is why I'm divorced. No, but wait, 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 wait. <laughs> but wait, wait. With that said, this is there's a lot of wisdom behind this. What would you say is maybe something that Adrian should yes. bring up in yes. What kind of advice yes. could we give Adrian? Yeah. To how set her up for success. Yeah, Lonnie. how can I avoid okay, having well, the worst start, six months of my let's life? Let's start from the high part <laughs> to the low. Okay. okay. So okay. you start first, since you're most successful with children and kids. Okay. You're single but you're still married and then I'm divorced. Okay, so let's go. go for okay. It. okay. What advice did you give? And did you do premarital counseling? I did. Okay. It was very important to Adam and I and our pastor. Hi Pastor Dudley. He thought it was important to, you know, definitely give us premarital counseling mm -hmm. before he married us. And it, yes. it helped us definitely in the long run. So I'm so happy you are doing it. Yes. Um, one of the biggest things that I learned is about communication. People will tell you that but a lot of the times when you communicate, you're already talk, you're already thinking about your rebuttal. You're not really listening, truly listening to what the person is saying. And here's the big one. You have to try to understand 
what they're saying. Mm. That's, That's the one. biggest one. Yeah. And then there's one more. Okay, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. This helped us out a lot. Our pastor said, make sure that you don't build a wall too high, because you know how sometimes you can get you can get into an argument, little resentments build up, grudges. Yes. yes. And he calls it laying bricks, right? Make sure you don't lay too many bricks that you can't, you know, walk over that wall. Yes. So when you have an issue, don't run from it. Yes. Talk about it, mm -hmm. face on, no matter what. Yes. This really yes. helps us. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because in that moment, it really makes me stop and think to not build. The wall. That is very okay. good. Okay. To keep your heart Beautiful. soft to your husband. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jeannie, did you do premarital counseling? Absolutely, yes. Um, when you're in the honeymoon phase or in the dating phase or even in the early marital phases, very rarely do couples talk about the number one thing that can also break them up finances. Mm -hmm. And another thing Susie Orman says herself that one of women's weaknesses is not understanding fi finances to the point that they're comfortable with it. And so some questions that I want to make sure that you or any couples that are walking towards marriage ask are, what is it, what's most important to you when it comes to money? What would happen between us if I were to stop working? We totally had this What would happen if you stopped working? Mm -hmm. What is your biggest fear when it comes to money? Um, yeah, like, is he making any? Yeah, <laughs> of course. No, I think those are real <laughs> conversations. Yes, these are things that not every, oh my don't gosh. you guys agree? Not no, everybody talks about. That's real. Early on and it's the, uncomfortable, the... but you have to talk you about have it. To. You have to. Talk How much about are you making? How much I'm making? What yes. do you, what are your expectations of me for what I'm, I should make yes. if something were to happen? Yeah. You know, and so as long as you guys can talk about that, like that's just Easy. a hurdle to get through that makes things very yeah. comfortable yeah. To be, in, in case anything happens, because money changes people, guys. Yeah, we it really does. We worked in business together before we were in a relationship, so money was never a weird thing for us to talk about. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's so really that's like, good. Good. So I, that part's easy. Yeah, so that's, that's, I think that's number one. And number two is, honestly, figuring out what your intimate life is going to be like because you guys are both traveling and you got to make sure you get that. Talking about the sex. You got to get, I was going to say, you got to get some sookie yes. sookie in for sure. And I, I yeah, I think I, you're going to have a I think you're going to be that. fine. But you never know. Not Adrian. Traveling. Adrian. Do we know who we're you talking to? You are going to get busier. And so yes. is Israel. And so, you know. Understood. If you're going to get busier, make sure you stay busy. I agree. That is, that is what ma marriage requires intimacy. Yes, yes agreed. absolutely. Lonnie, Lonnie, let's get down to the bottom. She started at the top? <laughs> now we here. <laughs> okay, talk to me. What do you suggest? I agree with everything they said. Everything they said is the opposite of what I did. So you oh listen to that God. and you'll be okay, all right? Oh, my God. <laughs> Seriously, you will be fine. I mean, you're doing your thing. The, the main thing is with the finances, mm -hmm. with, you know, the intimacy, things like that. It's like, for me, I didn't discuss with him where I wanted to be in my life. Mm -hmm. You already know where you want to be in your life. Yeah. So you'll mm -hmm. be okay. And you you guys are going to keep walking and, yeah. and, and going through things. So I think this is a great start. And I want to tell people, because a lot of people feel like therapy is a stigma against it. There is nothing, no, wrong, nothing wrong with, with talking. Because they're professional, they'll ask you a series of questions mm -hmm. that maybe your mama, because don't, you know, you can't go to my mama. I went to my mama for therapy. I, that's probably why I'm divorced. Sorry, mama. <laughs>